newspaper article that the Rothschilds had purchased Jerusalem in 1829. Rothschild helped found Israel, and Rothschild has always been the backer of Israel. Whatever Rothschild wants, he gets. It is believed that he is the richest man in the world, and I have little doubt of that. In 1897, the first Zionist Congress was held in Basel, Switzerland, and was chaired by Theodor Herzl. Jewish delegates from across Europe agreed that Palestine should be given to them. Prior to his death in 1904, Herzl predicted that a world body will one day give Palestine to the Jews, and that he will go down in history as the father of the Jewish state. For Herzl's dream to come true, European military powers would have to be manipulated and used into taking Palestine away from the Ottomans by force. Around 250 years ago, in 1760, Mayor Amschel Rothschild created the House of Rothschild that paved the way for international banking and control of the world's resources. Money is power! Money is the only weapon that the Jew has to defend himself with! Oh. Meyer Amschel Bauer, born in Frankfurt, Germany in 1744, was a moneylender and a goldsmith on Jew Street, whose shop had a sign out front with a red hexagram on it. Eventually, he would change his name to Rothschild, which is German for red sign. Rothschild soon learned that... And there's a very good reason he changed his name to Rothschild, like he said, means red sign and he had that red sign in front of his uh, uh, workplace. You see, there is a very good reason for that. I will prove that to you. But before we go any further, all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Chahakodash, double honors to apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us this truth and continue to teach us this truth Peace, salutation, shalom, shalom, shalom to all you brothers and sisters out there that are of the household of faith and to you brothers that are pushing this truth in honesty and in sincerity to you I say shalom, right? So I was going into this uh, clip right here. It's very informative, especially with the whole banking family and who runs the whole show, right? And you heard him say that they switched their name from uh, Bauer to Rothschild, and that word Bauer means uh, peasant, right? It means peasant. So we have peasants ruling, and the scriptures, the Bible clearly says, uh, prophesies about this happening. So we'll come back to this, but let's get this real quick to prove that point. Yeah, so this is Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter and the 7th verse. It says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So that is the uh, switch that happened where the servants are now the ones upon horses. This is something you don't see. It's like in the movie uh, Django Unchained, right? Where uh, Jimmy, uh, Jamie Foxx, you know, the role he played, he was riding on horses. And the slave master saw him riding on horses. He was pissed because servants are not supposed to be on horses. It is reserved for the princes. So this is what is happening in the case of the Rothschild, which they switched their name from Bauer to uh, Rothschild. Like you said, M Meyer Amschel Bauer, right? So they switched it to the Rothschild. So that Bauer means persons or servants so they are supposed to be servants but through prophecy through the God hand which Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai controls everything that happens in the earth through him he placed the servants on horses in other words they are running things they control your banking system they control your government they control the phone both sides of wars right everything that happens then you know, they're on top of it. 
your medical system, the food you eat, everything. They're on top of it. So the servants or the peasants are now the one in charge. So that's what the Bible is saying here. Uh, in Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter and the 7th verse, I have, seen, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So the switch is those, the princes that are supposed to be the ones riding the horses, they've become the slaves. They've become the servants, which brings about the transatlantic slave trades, right? What has happened to the uh, so-called Negroes, right? Because these are supposed to be your true princes because the world, the word, Israel, or the, the true Hebrew pronunciation of it is Yasharala, which that Yah means he, Shah means prince, and Allah, or, you know, you hear Muslims saying Allah, Allah, or God, or power, right? He, prince of power. He, prince of God. So these are the princes that are supposed to be riding the horses, but now they have become slaves. They are now the peasants, you see? But it's about to be... Uh, a turnover, right? It's about to be a turnover. Everything will be placed back in its normal place very soon. So going back to Genesis, the 25th chapter and the 23rd verse, because remember they changed their name from uh, Bauer, which is peasant, to Rothschild, which is red sign. And there's a very good reason for that. So this is Genesis, the 25th chapter and the 23rd verse. It says, uh, and the Lord said unto her, who is the her? That is Sarah, right? When she was pregnant with uh, uh, Isaac's children, uh, twins, right? So, the, 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 and, the, and those twins were warring in her stomach. In other words, they were fighting. It's like a, it's like a dispute inside her stomach by these two children, right? So she, 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 she was confused about that. So she went to a choir of the Lord, Yahweh HaShem, Yahweh Shai, to know what is going on with her. And this is the reply she got. It says, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So this is what happened. So the twins she had in her stomach with, even though they were brothers, they will be separated. They, these are two different, totally different people, which goes into the Edomites and the Israelites. They, are, they have totally, two total spirits, you know? There's nothing that can be compared. One is stronger than the other, and it's evident. You know, look at the sports. Who dominate the sports? Who dominate, uh, you know, boxing and all these things, right? It's very evident about that. You see what I'm saying? So that's what the, the scripture is explaining here. It says, and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red like a hurry garment. And they called his name Esau. So you see that? That is why the Rothschild chose that name. Rothschild would mean which means red sign. And they have that red sign in their in their walking place, right? That red is very uh, prominent in the society we live in, because the red Edomites are ruling, and the word Edom means red. You see that? So it's all coming together. It's all coming together. It makes sense why they chose that, because you might not know who they are. They know who they are. They have their records. They know exactly who they are, even though they try to shy away from that uh, name Esau, but some way, somehow, they still let you know who they are, right? So one of the documents you can check out is the uh, Master Plan of the Illuminated Rothschild. That is a very good document to further enlighten you about this. And this Master Plan of the Illuminated Rothschild uh, was uh, Ron Patton interviewing Marianne Knox, and in that in that uh, document, Marianne Knox lays out a lot of information about concerning the Rothschild and who they are, who they are in the scriptures, and a lot of the times they try to pretend to be who they are not, right? They try to pretend to be who they are not, which you see happening with you know 
with the so-called Jews, right? You know, the small hats. They're always pretending who they are not. They are not the people of the scriptures. They are not the true biblical Israelites, but they will pattern themselves to be that, right? So that, that, that document, the master plan of the Illuminator Rothschild, brings a lot of information to light. You can check it out. Just type in the master plan of the Illuminator Rothschild. It will come up, right? So going back to the clip. Loaning money to governments and kings was more profitable than it's on Jew Street whose shop had a sign out front with a red hexagram on it. Eventually, he would change his name to Rothschild, which is German for red sign. Rothschild soon learned that loaning money to governments and kings was more profitable than loaning money to private individuals. Not only were the loans bigger, but they were secured by the nation's taxes. Meyer Rothschild had five sons whom he trained in the skills of money creation and sent out to the major capitals of Europe to open branches of the family banking business. You are five brothers. I want you each to start a banking business in a different country. One to go and open a house in Paris, one in Vienna, one in London. Choose the most important centers. So that when money is to be sent from here to London, let us say, you won't have to risk life and gold and kill here in Frankfurt. We'll just send a letter to Nathan in London saying, I hey, so and so. And that will be offset by loans from London to Frankfurt. Understand? In your day, there will be many wars in Europe. A nation that have money to transport will come to the Rothschilds because it will be safe. Our five banking houses may cover Europe, but you will be one firm, one family. The Rothschilds who work always together. That will be your power. Just how rich and powerful is Lord Evelyn Rothschild? Historically, the Rothschild family wealth was hidden in underground vaults. The Rothschild secret financial records were never audited and never accounted for. Their family commission biographies give the illusion that their family fortune has dwindled, but researchers estimate their wealth at close to $500 trillion, more than half the wealth of the entire world. Besides their many castles, palace mansions, wineries, racehorses, and exotic resorts, the Rothschilds bought Reuters in the 1800s. Reuters then bought the Associated Press, which selects and delivers the same news stories to the entire world, day after day. They have controlling interest in three major television networks and easily avoid media attention since they own it. Until recently, they owned and operated England's Royal Mint and continue to be the gold agent for the Bank of England, which they also direct. They control the LBMA, London Bullion Market Association, where 30 to 42 million ounces of gold worth over $11 billion are traded daily. The Rothschilds earn millions weekly just on transaction fees alone. They also fix the world price of gold on a daily basis and profit from its ups and downs. Over the centuries, the Rothschilds have amassed trillions of dollars worth of gold bullion in their subterranean vaults and have cornered the world's gold supply. They own controlling interest in the world's largest oil company, Royal Dutch Shell. They operate phony charities and offshore banking services where the wealth of the black nobility in the Vatican is hidden in secret accounts at Rothschild Swiss banks, trusts, and holding companies. Although Evelyn Rothschild looks like a harmless gray-haired old man, make no mistake about it, Rothschild and his ancestors have hand-picked presidents, crashed stock markets, bankrupted nations, orchestrated wars, and sponsored the mass murder and impoverishment of millions. The wealth hoarded by this one family alone could feed, clothe, and shelter every human being on earth. The Rothschilds is the head of the snake. Hmm. So you get the idea. They control basically everything. And 
their wealth is out of this world, right? They could basically uh, feed everybody and make everybody millionaires and they would still have a whole lot of money because their money, their wealth is in the trillions and people in the world are just in the billions. You see what I'm saying? But they wouldn't do it. So they control everything. They have the money, which brings us to the scripture real quick. And in the book of Job, Let's get this real quick. Good. This is Job, the ninth chapter, the 24th verse. It says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. What does that mean? That means that the whole entire earth who controls it is the wicked. And the uh, another uh, name for the Edomites is the wicked. It tells you that in uh, Malachi uh, 1 and 3, right? Malachi, the first chapter and the third verse, it, it shows you that. We'll get that after this real quick. It says, uh, he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So this covering the faces of the judges is they did that through iconoclasm, right? during the rebirth of the Roman Empire, right? What happened, uh, they went ahead and destroyed all the uh, icons of the true nobility and they painted their faces over it, right? Even they painted their faces over the God of the Bible because the God of the Bible doesn't look anything like the God you see right now, you know, with the long hair and, you know, looking like that. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't look like that in the Bible. The God of the Bible is described as a as a so-called black man. It looks like a black man with a with a hairy, woolly hair, right? That's how it's described in the Bible. But you see another version of that uh, in, in in modern paintings and art, where he looks, you know, the way he looks with the long hair and. Uh, looking, them near looking like a, a, a mo, you know, a homosexual, right? So that is how they painted the faces of the judges thereof, right? Even the true biblical Israelites, right? The, the holy angels, everybody looks like the so called Edomites, right? Not the so called Edomites, the Edomites, right? So that's, that's the covering of the faces of the judges thereof. If not, who and where is he? So what is what the scripture is saying here is the wicked are in total control of the earth. The earth has been given into their hand. Hence why the clip we're watching telling you how the Rothschild controlled everything. So to bring more understanding on the wicked, so this is Malachi, the first chapter. Yep. Uh, at the third verse, let's start from the third verse. It says, And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. The fourth verse, it says, Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. What is a border? That is the beginning and end of a thing, right? Like the uh, Texas border, that is where America ends and uh, uh, Mexico begins, right? So that's the border. They're the beginning and ending of wickedness, right? It says, and the people against whom the Lord hath an indignation forever. So this is why they are known as the wicked. Because anywhere they are, they do nothing but wickedness. Like the lady was given the whole rundown on the uh, Rothschild family. They fund both wars. They have money to end poverty, but they wouldn't do it. They make even, they go ahead and uh, facilitate the impoverishment of the people. They put you in perpetual poverty so you can be easily controlled, right? All the wickedness that they do, this is why they are known as the wicked. You know, it is in their DNA. This is what they are known for. You see, I had to bring that out to give you clarification on that. So with that being said, within the city of London, there is a one mile foot. square that is referred to as the city. 
This is the headquarters of the Jewish family Rothschild's banking dynasty that owns the money supply through the central banks of almost every nation on earth. In November 1910, seven of the world's richest Jewish men held a secret meeting on Jekyll Island just off the coast of Georgia to establish a central bank, which they called the Federal Reserve Bank. These men... Yep, you can check out the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. And, and that creature from Jekyll Island was where they established the Federal uh, Reserve, right? And previously it was named the Federal Reserve because what you have to understand, the Federal Reserve has nothing to do with the Federal Government of America. It has nothing to do with America, period. But they had to give it that facade, they have to give it that deceptive name for you to think it is owned by the government, the Federal Government, but it is not. It is a private entity. So this is that creature from the Jerkle Island. This is how they came up with your, your fiat currency. You control every aspect of your banking system through this Federal Reserve. You see? So check that uh, book out, you know, those that are into reading books. I mean, you can't even read it in audiobooks. The Creature from Jerkle Island. Nelson Aldrich and Frank Vanderlip. Both representing the Rockefeller financial empire. Henry Davison, Charles Norton, and Benjamin Strong, representing JP Morgan, and Paul Warburg, representing the Rothschild banking dynasty of Europe. There were some powerful men who made it abundantly clear that they were not in favor of the Federal Reserve System. Their total wealth today would be worth nearly $11 billion. These were Benjamin Guggenheim, Isidore Strauss, and Jacob Bastor. Unfortunately, all of them were on board Titanic when it sank to the depths of the sea. All three died that night. By April 1912, all opposition to the Federal Reserve had been eliminated. On December 23, 1913, after many senators and congressmen had left town for Christmas, the President Wilson signed a bill and the privately owned Federal Reserve System came into being in the United States. After Woodrow Wilson had signed the Federal Reserve Act, which gave private interest control over economic power in 1913, he said, I am a most unhappy man. I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is now controlled by its system of credit. Our system of credit is concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. We have come to be one of the worst ruled one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in the civilized world. No longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and the vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and endurance of a small... Right? <clears throat> Good, man. A few men will run in the whole show. And it's all about total control. This is why they're moving everything from, you know, the... Uh, uh, fiat currency to a digital one because it will bring the total control to a, a whole nother level, right? Where your money will be programmable, the CBDCs and things like that, right? So the money, the digital money will be programmable on what to spend it on. If you're even going to spend it, they could just turn off your chip because the, the, the CBDC, there's a... The, the man, like an insider, that said the CBDC is a grain of rice in, inside your skin, right? That's what it is. That, that grain of rice goes, in, goes into the MOTB, the mark of the beast, inside your skin. So it will be totally programmable. They, they, they will uh, give you the okay on what to spend it on or what not to spend it on. This is where your uh, social credit system will be implemented. They will need you to be an obedient, compliant citizen to be able to, uh, uh, for Big Brother to give you, you know, the leeway to spend your money or else they will turn it off. You won't be able to spend it nowhere. You see, it goes into that total control that they have. So let's uh, end it off with the scripture right here. Psalms, the 20, uh, 73rd chapter. Uh -huh. 
to start out the uh, let's start out the uh, fourth verse. It says, "For there are no bands in their death." Uh, the third verse. For I, for I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So we've already established who the wicked is. The wicked are, known other, are none other than the Edomites, right? Edom, Esau, Edom is what they are known. We read that in uh, Malachi, uh, the first chapter, the third and the fourth verse, right? Also uh, in uh, Job, the ninth chapter and the 24th verse, right? So it says... Uh, for I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So every, the clip we saw is just telling you about the prosperity of the wicked, how they own everything, right? Everything, they own it all. They own it all. Everything has been given into their hand, the earth itself, right? So they prosper in their ways. So King David is saying here, I was envious of that, right? Because look at, look at the way we live and look at the way they live, you know? Somehow you'll be envious of it. You know, if you don't know any better, you'll be envious of that. But reading on, the fourth verse, it says, For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. In other words, they have total control and there's nothing to take them down. Right? They've been controlling the earth for, for centuries now. You know, for, for a pretty long while. And, and they're strong in that, even though they're beginning to come down, which is all biblical prophecy. Right? It says the fifth verse, They are not in trouble as other men, Neither are the plague like other men, right? You never seen a Rothschild being arrested. <laughs> you know, you never heard of a Rothschild being in some kind of a financial problem, being bankrupt, right? Like other men go through, right? You never hear that. You know, and they're not plagued like other men. They live long. They live to their 90s and, and stuff like that. You see? So that's what the scripture is saying here. They're not in trouble as other men. You know, the, the hell that we go through, they don't go through things like that. They don't worry about the... Uh, you know, the little things that we worry about, how to pay rent and, you know, how to uh, send our children to school and, you know, all the things that we worry about. They don't worry about that, you know. The, the sixth verse, it says, Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. See, so because they're not in trouble as other men, they're very prideful of that. You know, they own the banking system. You come to them for the want of all things. It gives them that cojones to be very prideful. You see, that's what the scripture is saying here. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. So having this power and having this wealth, they can form both sides of wars and watch people just, you know, delete each other. And they're okay with that, right? They're okay with that. They will form both sides of wars and just want uh, watch blood shed throughout the earth. They don't care. They don't give a good goddamn, right? So that's that violent nature of them. They're very violent. You know, they love to see blood shed. Going back to their name, Red. You know? That's why they love the stick, ta ta. You see what I'm saying? It says the seventh verse Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They have it all, man. They have so much money that they can end poverty in a day. But would they do it? Oh, hell no. They're not going to do it because they are the wicked. You know, they are the wicked. They, they, they're not designed to help you in any, in any way, shape, or form. They are designed to put you through hell. You know, they're designed to, you know, oppress you, put you in an oppressive state. You know, that is more their nature. You see, the eighth verse, they are corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily, right? They don't care. You know, they'll blame everybody for what is going on with the world, right? They pollute the whole earth and they blame everybody, you know? And they'll tell you to pull yourself up by the bootstrap. <laughs> you know, that's the, how they speak uh, wickedly concerning oppression. They see how you're suffering. They tell you it's your fault, right? Everybody has the chance to make it. Why are you not making it? Meanwhile, they know they're the ones making everything hard for everybody. You know? You see? So they speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. In that verse, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. In other words, 
they, they speak things against the Most High. They had that uh, dude, Yuval Noah Harari, talking about how, you know, they are more advanced than the God of the Bible, and the God of the Bible has no uh, dealings with their with their new the new world that they are building, right? So this is how they set their mouth against the heavens, right? Therefore his therefore his people return hither, and the waters are full of and the waters of of a full cup are wrung out to them, and they say, How does the most high know and is is their knowledge in the most high, right? They'll boastfully and pridefully to tell you that they're atheists and there's no God, right? You know, that's why they say, uh, it's their knowledge in the most high. So why should we care about the most high? We have the earth uh, in our hands, but they don't know that the most high gave them the earth, you know, because it's their time. It is, it's the time of the wicked to rule. And after the time of the wicked ruling, is accomplished, guess what? It will be the time of the righteous to rule. You see? That is how, that is the perfect balance of the God of the Bible, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Right? He has a dual nature to him. You know? Like they say, the yin and the yang, white and black, things like that, right? So that's the perfect balance of the Most High God, right? He will give wickedness his time. And you learn from it. You understand that wickedness, ruling than wickedness, has no real value. It has no real uh, uh, something to boast of, right? So you would desire righteousness. And when the world is run in righteousness, guess what? It will be much more acceptable and much more beneficial to the whole earth than in wickedness. Look at the world running in wickedness chemtrails all over, making everybody sick, deliberately making everybody sick. And the people that are supposed to heal you, they can't even do that. But they milk money off of you, and they can't even heal you, right? They feed you with all kinds of abominable things, right? This is the wicked ruling. This is what you get. Your water is polluted. Your air is polluted. Your food is garbage, GMO things, and uh, lab-produced uh, you see? So you, you would tend to love righteousness when the righteous are in authority. You see? It says, uh, the 12 verse, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. And you could just put the picture of the Rothschild right next to this verse right here. They are the ungodly that prosper in the world and they increase in riches. Right? Daily they include talking about they're making billions just off of every day, just like that. You know? Every day, man. They're increasing in riches. They can never have enough. So verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. This is how we feel, man. Meanwhile, while we are being chastened and going through hell. These are the guys, the wicked, they, 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 they are living it up. They are living it up, man. They are living it up. It says, uh, if, uh, the 15th verse, if I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. The 16th verse, and when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. The 17th verse, until I went into the sanctuary of the Most High, then understood I their end. Whose end? The end of the wicked. So when you understand that there is going to be an end to the Russia ruling, their banking system, all of this, their NWO agenda, all of that, right? There is an end to that. So once you understand that, guess what? It gives you uh, hope for the future. It gives you hope, right? And you wouldn't be jealous of their life, right? Because you know there's an end to that. They're about to be brought down to the basis of men that they are, right? The 18 verse, it says, Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. What is that? A slippery place, you're easy to fall. So with all the money that they've amassed, with all the uh, agendas that they got going on, it's nothing but a slippery place to bring them down. With every agenda they accomplish, with every money they make, guess what? They're closer to falling to the ground. 
the game, closer to that. That is the slippery places they've been put on. Thou castest them down into destruction. 19 verse. How are they brought into desolation as in the moment? And they are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Right there. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a reward for the wicked and how they've run the earth, even though it's been given into their hand. And look at the way they've run it. And the whole world is tired of the wicked ruling. And very soon, they will be taken out of power. And the righteous will be put in their rightful place. And the earth will flourish under the rule of the righteous. And with that, all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Chahakodash, the Warners, the Apostles, and Elders of Great Millstone. See you next time, Lord willing. Shalom.